Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick demonstration on the how to handle atmosphere in a scene like this. So the first place to start when you're adding atmosphere is probably to use the sky color. And you probably don't want to pick the sky down near the ground if you're if you've already got your sky kind of painted out. You want to pick up a little bit higher because that'll give you a more saturated sky color. And what I like to use is the lighten layer. So what the lighten layer does is it will push the shadows up, right? So this is getting close to what lighting does, or I mean to what atmosphere does. What it won't do is drop the brights down, and so we'll have to do that manually after we've done a little bit with the sky here. But I'm going to go down just a little bit more in value because I don't want it to be interrupting all the stuff that's going on back here. But I like the mixing that's happening here. So this stuff, that the mixing that's happening there is artificial. That's not right. In fact, I don't think I want as much of it as I'm getting there. What you can do with this is, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll just paint the atmosphere onto everything like this. <laughs> and then I'll just, you know, I'll start dealing with the depth type of effects and then I'll erase away mountains, one mountain at a time. So this foreground one I'm going to pull back. In fact, since these are almost on the same plane, I'll just do this all together. I don't know. I don't have my fade key. So I'll fade that to about 50%. And I'm just picking that percentage arbitrarily based on what it looks like. If I wanted them to look like they were far away from each other. It's not highly technical, but it's what I wanted. So now I erased the whole thing again, including this mountain this time. And I'm fading that at about 50% as well, maybe a little bit less. And then I'm just going to make it so that this foreground part of this mountain has a little bit it's just a little bit closer to us, so it'll be a little bit more contrasty. I think I got too, I took too much out of that though, so I'm going to pull some of that back in there. So let's also just deal with the sky really quick. So the sky is going to be different in value and temperature from the top to the bottom and from one side to the other. So toward the sun, it gets slightly warmer. Towards the top, it gets cooler. So generally speaking, you're going to pick cooler colors for up here. That's too much, obviously, so pull back on that. You'll get a little bit less saturation along the horizon. And sometimes you even get this kind of bright halo that happens at the horizon line. Usually it's not bright right at the, the dark, the lowest parts on the horizon though. So what you'll get is this kind of weird yellow, yellow orange that happens right near the bottom. Just under that halo. And I don't know if that's just from like, you know, dust and pollution and other stuff in the air, but that's usually what you'll see is something like that. Okay. And so the first thing I, I need to do is I need to address what happens to the color of the highlight as it goes back in the distance. Now, purple is probably not right. It was a good start. But most likely what's going to happen is, let's start with a color that's like the one that we want. So here's what the, the rock kind of is going to look like in the foreground. When I add a little bit more, um, let's just do brush like this. So once I add in the detail and stuff, I imagine that the brightest parts of my rocks I'm going to make a little bit warmer and brighter, right? And that's just a decision that I'm making based off of what I see here. It's not 
grounded in some principle of how rocks are. So when I'm deciding what the, the brightest rocks on that mountain in the background should be, it'll probably be based off of that. So instead of rolling hue first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in value and I'm going to drop in saturation. That's going to be my first jump. And then I will roll in hue. So my background mountain is probably going to be So it, what the light and layer will give you is it's going to roll towards the hue first. And what you'll probably want instead is as you're, you know, obviously you drop in value because the atmosphere is scattering some of that light away. But you're also going to drop, in, by, by going towards gray, you're dropping the temperature of the light, right? You're making it cooler. So that's what I'm going to do instead of rolling towards the purple. The purple doesn't look quite right. It looks kind of artificial like that Hildebrandt picture I showed you. So I'll drop mostly in saturation and a little bit in value. Well, and because you're dropping the temperature, it feels like you're going towards cooler temperature? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, this distant mountain, if I, if I make this closer mountain kind of that color where it's mostly gray and you know you can roll a little bit in hue towards the, the other color but it's going to mostly be a temperature shift then this background one I'm going to go all the way gray and just a little bit darker and for the f most distant parts I may actually add just a little bit of hue, you know, a little bit of blue in there. So it's going actually rolling from the grays into the blues that we're painting toward. Try to make this look like a blue mountain so that's happening in the distance. I'll also try to make it so that this mountain peak here is different. This foreground one is different from the one in the background, so we'll just add just a little bit more there. So now you see that mountain feels like it's in front of the mountain behind it just because of that slight shift in value and temperature. When you get a mountain that's really far in the distance, and I won't necessarily do this with this one, but um, the difference in value between this and this is going to be very small. So we're going to end up with these very subtle shifts. When, when that's starting to happen, though, it's going to be more like um, you're going to be getting a lot closer to this color. So let's do one more mountain here, something that is losing almost all of its identity against the sky. trying to figure out what temperature that should be. I don't want to lose everything about it. So now I'm just going to go mostly toward a gray and just slight, I, I just barely touched that brush to the canvas just to get a little bit of that light there. And you can see how that's working. Now, I actually, I, I went a lot brighter here than I was with these mountains, and that's not necessarily realistic. So I would probably need, in order to justify that, for these rocks to be a lot brighter as well. So then we've got these mountain, uh, you know, the, these bright close parts should be kind of white. And then as we go back in the distance, we should be losing value and rolling into the yellows and oranges. Probably more yellows on this one.
and for this far distant mountain. Probably just going to drop off quite a bit. You don't want to go too saturated yellow, keep it kind of in the grays range. But if I do snow back there, it's going to look something more like this. Except in the shadows, we'll be losing it mostly. It's going to be kind of this blue, soft blue that's happening. That's not the color I was hoping for. You could actually just go for the sky color. It's not bad. Does that make sense? So let's toss, since we've only got a few minutes left, let's toss a cloud into this sky. So let's do this. Are there any questions about what I just did? Um, so when you made the snow on the light side of that mountain in the farthest back, that mm -hmm. was that whole principle of lights as they recede into space grow warmer. Yes. Yeah, so the rest of the mountain, all of the other things are getting cooler as they go back, but the whites are getting warmer. Uh, they'll, they'll get more saturated. The whites will get more saturated because they're going from white to the yellow. No, but that mountain was a lot lower on the horizon. Uh, the lower it is on the horizon, the more that effect is pronounced, because that white is having to pass through more atmosphere, which so is filtering away the blues and giving you only the warms. So, so it would get redder? So it would get redder, okay. yes. But like I said, most mountains that are, you know, if, if it, once you get far enough away that you would actually turn it towards the oranges that you would see the sun are going to be around the curvature of the earth. You won't see them anymore. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do with this cloud is I'm going to just get the values established. I'm going to treat it first and foremost as a solid object, just because that's the easiest thing to do. And I'm going to try and pull some cools from above if I have shadows and warms down underneath. I'm probably going to want to be consistent though with the whites elsewhere in the scene. I probably need those whites to be a little bit darker. So these whites that I painted here, they should be a lot bluer. So they're only being lit by the sky and since they're white, they're gonna pick up the sky's color pretty easily. So you can get away with them being pretty saturated in the shadows. Makes sense. Except right here, you're going to get other stuff like because that snow is bouncing up on it, you'll get mixtures of other colors in there from the other light. So you'll get warms and cools. Okay, so back to the cloud. Sorry. So I'm going to deal with the larger forms first, then the smaller forms. So I'll just kind of treat it as this big white blobby thing. Now there's a number of ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you kind of one of my favorites, but if I just do a quick little selection here and I try to get the energy, you know, you were asking about getting that kind of energetic movement of the cloud. I'm going to try and get that energy just in the shape of this selection here. And now, instead of just picking uh, a gray, a gray would be fine because we'll be turning it down a little bit, but I'm going to pick